My name is Bonnie Cruzy. I'm a Nebraska past state president of the General Federation of Women's Clubs. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters. I'm a Rotarian. I'm a member of the Seward County Groundwater Guardian Team, and I am a member of the Seward Citizens on Pipeline Route Committee. I'm a concerned and active citizen. Pipelines break, leak, and spill. Denied the presidential permit for the Exile Pipeline. This is not a knee-jerk reaction. It is based on what we have learned and observed. TransCanada will only do what the U.S. Department of State requires them to do to get the pipeline built. What TransCanada agrees to do and what they actually do are two different things. Instead of fixing a problem up front, they try to negotiate their way out of it or pass the buck. We learned and observed this when the first Keystone Pipeline was built. There are lots of examples from violating road haul agreements, failing to restore the land, to bullying landowners, but I only have three minutes. So do you really think you have thought of everything? After reading the EIS executive statement, I don't think so. This pipeline is to be built from steel and pipe made in China, which has only 75% the strength of U.S. steel. Let's talk about real jobs. The best welders cannot make up for the weak pipe made in China. The U.S. Department of State is not demanding that the pipeline be made of strong U.S. steel that would indeed create a significant number of jobs. Deny the presidential permit. Pipelines break, leak, and spill. The U.S. statement indicates reporting record record keeping certification for the final eight conditions with certification from a senior officer of Keystone that has complied with the special conditions. This action is tantamount to putting the fox in charge of the hen house. Deny the presidential permit. Pipelines break, leak, and spill. The EIS statement says, in no spill incident scenario would the entire northern High Plains aquifer system be adversely affected. Professor John Stansbury, Associate Professor of Environmental Water Resources Engineering at the, University, at the University of Nebraska, and instructor for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Assessment Program, reported that a spill in the sand hills above the aquifer could dump as much as 180,000 barrels of crude oil, tainting the vast water supply in the region. The IS was developed by Intrex, the same company that is used by both the U.S. Department of State and TransCanada. It is obvious that the EIS is biased in favor of TransCanada. The U.S. Department of State has failed to respond to Stanberry's analysis of worst case spills from the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. Pipelines break, leak, and spill. Deny the presidential permit. The U.S. Department of State has the power to demand that this pipeline be moved away from the aquifer. But no, the EIS statement says the Western alternative was eliminated since it was financially impracticable. If you can't afford to build this pipeline right using the strongest U.S. steel, and you can't afford to place it in a route to avoid the Sand Hills region and the Ogallala Aquifer that supplies drinking water to two million people, then you have no business building the pipeline at all. <laughs> Pipelines break, leak, and spill. Deny the presidential permit. What about the threat of terrorism? This pipeline is to be built only four feet underground through the Ogallala Aquifer, which supplies drinking water for two million people. Maps of the location of this pipeline are easily obtainable, and it wouldn't take a major blow up of the pipeline. The EIS analysis acknowledges that the pipeline system could spill as much as 1.7 million gallons of diluted bitumen a day without triggering the real-time leak detection system. Pipelines break, leak, and spill. Deny the presidential permit. This permit is not in the national, this pipeline is not in the national interest. The oil in this pipeline is from tar sands, mined and developed by four known companies operating in Canada. The oil is to be pumped through a pipeline built by TransCanada from steel and pipe made in China and transported through the United States, putting U.S. land and water at risk so that oil can be sold to foreign countries. Once this pipeline is in the ground, we are forced to live with it and its consequences for generations to come. Secretary of Energy Chu, you can't have your cake and eat it too. There is no trade-off to risking the environment for a reliable supply. Pipelines break, leak and spill. Deny the presidential permit. Behold, a pipeline cometh. Machines loom large with snort and growl, behemoths gobbling up good soil, gouging, gorging earth's deep bowel. Clay mounds explained a mindless toil.
Disrupted earth through water rages that blights upon terrain so fair, mad again as shameful pages to God's trust placed in his care. Blades and boars assault the fields, raking clefts across the plains. Grain repaid with stunted yields, laments the loss of promised gains. Black vicious fluid pulses on through gaseous crust upon the earth. Bystanders play the role upon as pipes snake settle throbs of dearth. Piped payments scratch at what is lost. Time only past will answers give. Children to come shall bear the cost, praying their families safely live. Uncertain life within us grows. We wait on God to show us light, trusting that he only knows, teaching us what's true and right. Thank you.